and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Horizon. In this episode, we're going to continue conversation about shadows and its color, particular temperature. Should the shadow be warm or should the shadow be cool? For that, we need to come back to definition of shadow and its characteristics. Shadow is the absence of light. The form, whether it's an apple or anything else, is still there. The shadow is a darkness that comes on top of that apple, making it very hard to see. Shadow has to have a quality of transparency and depth that we can see through the shadow and shadow shape has to move back relative to the light that has to protrude and come forward towards the viewer. And that's how illusion of form is created. Because of those qualities, the answer to the question becomes simple. Shadow must be predominantly warm because only warm temperature in the dark has a quality of receding back and quality of transparency. The cool color is the opposite. In the dark, cool color trudging, moving forward towards the viewer. And cool color creates opaque flatness. It does not have a quality of transparency. Therefore, shadow must be warmer than the light. The light can still be warm, but the shadow must be even warmer, making the light look relatively cooler to itself. If we look back in the history of art and see how artists in the past painted shadows, we will see that all the way up to Impressionist, shadows were treated as a warm shapes. Let's look at the examples like self-portrait by Rembrandt. And you can see that even though the light shapes of his face are really warm, almost a golden yellow, the shadow shape relatively still remains to be a warm temperature. They have enough warmth in them to move back into the warmer background and create a glowing feeling of depth and transparency. In his painting of old women, Velasquez uses very cool light shapes and the shadow shapes are very warm. He's using brownish, brownish, yellow and orange to create a glowing shadows opposite of the cooler light. And now let's look at the Impressionist self-portrait by Van Gogh. Van Gogh uses very blue, blue-green shadow shape. And his background in the self-portrait is also blue. And one can argue that he used the blue in the shadow to move the shadow back into background by connecting them with the temperature and color. Blue is too cool to allow the eye to enter in. And because of that, it looks flat. On the example of self-portrait by Paul Gauguin, you can see that the side plane of his face is also very, very cool, has a lot of blues and greens. And his background is yellow, so his shadow shape doesn't move towards the yellow. They are too contrasty in its color and its saturation and the temperature. So not only they look flatter and not having depth, they also not harmonized with the background color. The important point to make that very few things in painting is absolute, that everything is relative. And so when we talk about the temperature of shadow, I don't mean that all the shadows are always warm. Shadow predominantly warm. It will have a notes 
of coolness. It may be a cooler reflective light coming in. It may be reflecting a cooler object next to it. But predominant quality of shadow temperature remains to be warm for the reason that it needs the depth and it needs illusion of transparency. And now I will do a demonstration on a portrait changing the temperature of shadow and showing you how it will affect the look of the portrait. Right now, this portrait has a very warm shadow shapes. And the shadow shape is very much connected to the darker shadow shape of his hair. So you almost can lose the edge between the hair and the cheekbone. There is also a cooler reflective light from his neck and his chest coming towards the bottom plane of the chin. In the portrait, the way we mix shadow shape, there is many ways to do it. I could start with raw umber or black. I just don't have black. So this would be my darkness of the shadow. And then I'll use a little bit of warmer color, like cadmium red light, to warm it up. And then I'll use a little bit of cadmium yellow deep to add luminosity to that shadow shape. Now, if I add it too much, I'll add a little bit more red. And if the shadow got a little bit too light, I'll add my dark. Let's try what that's going to look. Yeah, that's what that shadow would be. And the reason why the shadow shapes have to be warm because they need depth. They need a feel of transparency. So to prove my point, let's go and paint a very cool shadow on this portrait and see how that shadow will look. I took a lot of blue and just painted a very cool shadow in this portrait. And I'm going to leave this shadow for comparison. Do you see what happens that the cooler colors in the shadow come forward and the warmer colors in the shadow recede back? When the colors recede back, there is a feeling of the depth. And when the colors in the shadow come forward, they feel that it's like a flat piece of shape that doesn't allow your eye to go through. And that is exactly the opposite what the shadow is. So when you paint your shadows too cool, instead of receding to the back, they are coming forward. But it is function of the light to come forward and the function of the shadow to move back towards the background. So notice when I start warming up this shadow, right there, there is already a feeling of depth. It's like the life is breathed into that shadow and it's glowing. It's not flat anymore. So I hope that with this demonstration, I showed you the importance of the shadow having enough warm colors in it so it will have a certain depth. Now, yes, the part of the shadow could be relatively cooler than some parts. For example, if I have a cool light that is reflecting to it, I might bring a little cooler reflection into the shadow. Like that. I can even go stronger if I want to. Remember, reflective light is something that is your choice. You can choose how much how strong and where 
to have reflective light. So I can reflect the light here. Now, let's say there is a strong, warm light coming from his left hand side. And now the reflection can be a little warmer. So the reflective light depends on the color of light and the color of object that is reflecting. If he is wearing a red short, the reflection will be red. If there is a yellow wall next to him, the reflection will be yellow. But overwhelming temperature of the shadow must still remain warm to have the feeling of the depth. That, I hope, explains the question about temperature of shadows. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you like this episode, please subscribe and share it with others.